Hello, I'm Anthony Chan uh, from London, United Kingdom. I'm here at ACR 23 in San Diego, uh, reporting for Room Now. And uh, today at the conference, we've uh, heard about uh, new developments in the area of rheumatoid arthritis. And today I want to focus on the area of diet. There's a lot of uh, discussion that we've had about the impact of diet on uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, today I'm joined by um, uh, Marta Salaklimon. Uh, she is a researcher from University of California, San Diego, and she's presented an abstract number 2125 on the use of a diet called ITIS, and this is in comparison to the Mediterranean diet. And uh, some really interesting findings, and I'm very happy that, uh, Marta, you can come and join us. Yeah, thank you. So um, tell us a little bit about your study uh, from the uh, presentation today. Yeah, so uh, we conducted a blinding randomized clinical trial, and this is an ongoing study, but the preliminary outcomes that we that we are finding is the, the, the poster in, that we presented. Uh, so what we are trying to do is to observe the effect of the ITIS diet for three months in uh, rheumatoid arthritis patients and the effect of the Mediterranean diet for uh, three months in rheumatoid arthritis patients. So at each, uh, at each visit, what we do is a physical examination of the patient. We also gave them a, a health test like the health assessment questionnaire, mm -hmm. uh, and also we collect blood, stool, and saliva samples mm -hmm. for the further analysis. Mm -hmm. um, so what we observe uh, right now is that patients following ITIS diet uh, have improved uh, a little better than, than patients following just the, the Mediterranean diet. So uh, ITIS patients, uh, so, sorry, uh, patients following the ITIS diet improve their pain, their fatigue, their C day. Um, uh, their visual skill analog from the physician and the visual skill analog from the from the patient. Uh, while the Mediterranean diet patients uh, improve their C day and the visual skill analog uh, from from the from the physician. Uh, this is uh, of course preliminary data, so we cannot say that ITIS diet is much better than the Mediterranean diet, but this is uh, some tendencies that we can observe. Um, also, while um, while seeing the adherence to the diet, we could observe that ITIS patients were more adherent to the diet. Uh, we are further analyzing this data, so I cannot tell you much about this, but uh, this is what we observed, and we we thought that was interesting to to to, to further analyze. And then for the microbiome analysis, what we just did was uh, with the baseline microbiome of all uh, the patients we try to predict the response of, of the diet. So for ITIS diet patients uh, at day plus 15, those who did not respond show a higher abundance of uh, Keribacteria and Rekibacteria. And those uh, who responded f uh, find a higher abundance of the rhea. Uh, while in the Mediterranean diet patients, we observed just that the non-responders had a, a higher abundance of enterococcus. Uh, and then we observed very different things uh, at three months, and we are not very sure if this is just because we don't have enough patients, like we have some dropouts, so we don't have as much patients at three months at, as we did at two, at, uh, sorry, day plus 15. Um, but we observed some differences, which uh, for ITIS diet will be uh, that uh, the non-responders show higher abundance in uh, cor Coriobacterium and uh, the responders show higher abundance in Granulicatella. And then for the Mediterranean diet patients, we didn't observe any uh, higher abundance in non-responders, but we observed some almost statistically uh, significant high abundance in responders for uh, paraprevotella and lagnos, uh, lagnobacterium. So a very comprehensive study, mm -hmm. uh, although I understand you used to say preliminary, but I suppose very promising uh, because for many t years we've only kind of knew about Mediterranean diet mainly. Mm -hmm. So for our benefit, can you just tell us what is in the ITIS diet? What, what components yeah. make up the ITIS diet? Sure. So. Uh, ITIS diet, the main difference between ITIS diet and Mediterranean diet is that in ITIS diet we try to eliminate the pro-inflammatory foods that can be present in the Mediterranean diet. For instance, dairies. Um, uh, well, with dairies, I, I have to say that there are some contradictory data. Uh, we just decided to remove it because it can be pro-inflammatory, but there's no for sure evidence that, that supports that this is uh, pro-inflammatory. 
Uh, we are removing the alcohol, uh, sugary drinks, um, uh, refined grains, uh, solanacea like tomato and eggplants, um, and red meat. And also for for vegetables, we 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 try them to to eat like more kale, more broccoli, so more greens, more anti-inflammatory uh, vegetables. In terms of um, of fruits, we ask them to eat more enzymatic fruits like uh, mango or pineapple. Uh, also anti antioxidant fruits like berries, strawberries, raspberries, uh, and then in terms, for instance, of fish, we ask them to eat more omega-3 rich fish, uh, which will be the fatty fatty fish, but the smaller ones because of the high metals. And for um, sorry for for meat, we are asking them to to eat chicken or turkey, but like two to three times per week, not more. Uh, because the the main thing we want to do is try to to change a little bit the um, the protein from meat from animal to vegetable protein because mm-hmm. that's also more anti-inflammatory, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, also, in terms of a uh, coffee and green tea, we are trying to reduce the coffee intake and improve the green tea intake because it's much more anti-inflammatory and antioxidant and basically those are the so more green tea uh, in the <laughs> itis diet yeah uh, which is uh, something we should uh, encourage more yeah <laughs> uh, certainly from this evidence that we have so there was an improvement in some of the report patient outcomes yes uh, uh-huh. some of the uh, clinical outcomes yeah but also there was a change in the biodiversity or the microbiome yeah. in the two diets mm-hmm. so do we think that that perhaps could explain some of the clinical outcomes although it's preliminary what is your projection yeah. So our projection is uh, when we uh, finally get all the patients that we are trying to reach, uh, we are going to evaluate the microbiome uh, at each time point to see if this can be changed because of the diet. Uh, but I think uh, the baseline trying to respond, uh, t- sorry, trying to predict the response is also important. Uh, so yeah, we are getting further analysis in this but also we are trying to to evaluate the bile acids and different acids that come come from the from bacteria uh, so it's more what we are doing than what I could show in the poster uh, but yeah we are trying to to have um, a correlation between the the biological samples and the re- their response and I think that would be quite important in mm. terms of uh, showing a biological effect yeah. uh, of your diet on the on the microbiome and then linking it back to the the clinical outcomes yeah. as, as a kind of completion of the whole loop yeah. if you like <laughs> um, so going forward you know what does you know what does the future hold for your project what 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 would be the next kind of steps you know, you be looking into I know you're going to complete the, the uh-huh. assessments and the microbiome yeah uh, and you recruit more patients mm-hmm. yeah so we will also be analyzing the bile acids mm-hmm. oh, yes. um, and we will also be analyzing uh, saliva saliva samples and that will be mainly the thing also oh, sorry we will also be trying to observe the oxylipin change um, but those are our thoughts right now. Okay. Uh, I think we will have to do much more things. Yeah. But those is, are the the near future. Yeah. Things. So so a lot of m- promising new data mm-hmm. that we probably would see in future meetings and yeah. hear mm-hmm. more about your work. Um, so uh, are there any sort of take home messages that you have from your study for our audience? Uh, yeah. Or so um, wait. I cannot say that the ITIS diet is better than nature and diet for our preliminary data, but uh, we can observe that. If you improve the anti-inflammatory and antioxidant foods and remove the pro-inflammatory foods, uh, this can be helping the patients. We can observe that with only 20-something uh, patients. We, we could observe that. So I could say that you can try to, 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 to follow this uh, as, as, as a patient or as a, as a physician. You can uh, advise us to your, to your uh, patient and that could be... Uh, a really good uh, improvement for them. The, 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 we used to say an apple a day yeah. keeps the doctor <laughs> away. Maybe not at this point in time, but maybe in the future, a cup of green tea a day yeah. <laughs> might keep the doctor away. Early yeah. days, but we look forward to your research. So thank you very much for uh, sharing with us your information. Thank you so and much. we look forward to your, your future research studies. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much.